After defeating the Minotaur and the tragic death of King Aegean, Theseus, the crown prince of Athens, became Attica's ruler. After cementing his power, the new king of Athens came to be revered because of his accomplishments as a young man. Theseus was a just, wise, and magnanimous king. He was not power-hungry. In his reign, power was handed over to the people and all citizens were seen as equals. Theseus kept only his position as supreme chief of the Athenian army. It was a prosperous period in Attica. Athens was considered the happiest and freest city in the world. Democracy flourished. The king had a kind heart. When he learned that the great hero Hercules had gone mad and was plunged into a terrible depression, Theseus set out to help him. Theseus succeeded in boosting Hercules' morale. After their meeting, the two heroes established close bonds of friendship. When Hercules left for the kingdom of the Amazons to perform another of his famous labors, Theseus went with him. After defeating the Amazons, Theseus returned to Attica, bringing with him the Amazon Antiope. The hero had his son Hippolytus with her. But the Amazons had not forgotten the abduction of their princess Antiope and prepared an expedition to invade the Attica region. The warrior women terrorized the area and even invaded Athens. Led by Theseus, the Athenian population fought against the horde of women warriors. Antiope fought alongside Theseus and was killed on the battlefield for her betrayal. The Athenians bravely repulsed the invaders. After the Athenians' heroic victory, no enemy ever dared to invade Athens while Theseus was the ruler. Theseus may not have been someone thirsty for power, but his love of adventure made him take part in the hunt for the Caledonian boar. He also joined the hero Jason in his quest for the Golden Fleece. Theseus had reached the peak of his glory. His prestige was such that some referred to him as the Athenian Hercules. Unlike many other Greek heroes, Theseus did not lose his life in his youth. Alongside his friend Pirithus, the king of the Lapiths, Theseus would still have many adventures ahead of him. Theseus traveled to the Thessalian region at the invitation of his friend Pirithus. He was about to marry the beautiful princess Hippodamia. The relatives of the king, known as Lapiths, a rough but very brave people from the mountains, were invited to the royal wedding. They were the first Greeks to tame and ride horses. The Lapiths were the sons of the famous king Ixion, thrown into Tartarus by the gods to face eternal suffering. The centaurs, beings that were a mixture of man and horse, were also invited. The creatures were also Ixion's children, so there was some rivalry between them and the Lapiths. The feast began, and Theseus fraternized with the Lapiths and the centaurs. Everything seemed going well at this exotic party. But as the guests became intoxicated with too much booze, the centaur's most primitive instincts began to surface. Eurytus, leader of the centaurs, drunk on wine, decided to kidnap Pirithus' beautiful bride. The centaur grabbed Hippodamia, and the bride shrieked in panic. The other centaurs followed the leader's example and carried off the guests' wives and the king's maids. Theseus could not bear to see such barbarity. Alongside Pirithus, he led the Lapiths against the centaurs. The Lapiths threw everything they had within reach at the centaurs. Dishes, amphorae, and jugs soared through the air. Theseus hit the centaur leader in the head with a bronze jug. The creature fell to the ground with its head split open. With his spear, Pirithus charged at the centaurs. The fight between the Lapiths and the centaurs was bloody. But Theseus's presence, armed with a club, was decisive for the Lapiths' victory. The queen was rescued, and Pirithus owed a great debt of gratitude to Theseus. This event further strengthened the bonds of friendship between the heroes, who became inseparable friends. They would even storm the realm of the dead together. Theseus was no longer young. After the death of Antiope, the Amazon and mother of his son Hippolytus, the hero did not remarry. But the hero eventually met Phaedra, sister of Ariadne, the great love of Theseus' youth. The young woman made Theseus experience again his golden boyhood years. 
when he alone faced the terrible Minotaur. With the consent of the King of Crete, the hero married Phaedra and made her his queen, sealing an alliance between the Cretan and Athenian kingdoms. The age difference between Theseus and his new wife was enormous. She was the same age as his son, Hippolytus. The young man was pure and had taken a vow of chastity in honor of the goddess Artemis. The prince was extremely handsome. Therefore, the queen began to cultivate a secret love for her stepson. Only her faithful servant knew of the queen's love for Hippolytus. Theseus had left on a journey, and Phaedra took the opportunity to give vent to all the repressed love in her heart. The queen declared her love for Hippolytus and proposed that they unite to reign over Athens together. Hippolytus, unlike Phaedra, placed loyalty to Theseus primarily and repudiated the outrageous proposal. The young man left Athens, leaving the distraught queen behind. Desperate, Phaedra decided to end her own life, but due to passionate madness, she wrote a letter to Theseus before the act. Upon returning to Athens, the old hero learned of his wife's death, and the servant handed him the letter written by Phaedra. The contents of the letter had a devastating effect. The Mad Queen accused Hippolytus of having tried to rape her, and, not to be unfaithful to her husband, she wrote she had no choice but to commit suicide. The enraged Theseus confronted his son, presenting the letter as proof of his treachery. Hippolytus denied having committed that dastardly deed, but Theseus did not take his son at his word. The king of Athens cursed Hippolytus and begged Poseidon, his divine father, to put an end to the treacherous prince's life. Hippolytus left in his chariot, carrying a great sorrow in his heart. On the afternoon of that day, Theseus received news that his son had suffered a terrible accident while driving the chariot and was on the verge of death. Theseus feigned indifference to the news, but Phaedra's maid could not bear to see the suffering caused by her mistress and decided to reveal the whole truth to Theseus. The Athenian sovereign felt immense pain and ran to his son, who was gasping his last breaths. Shedding tears over the young man's body, Theseus blamed himself for not having trusted his son. Hippolytus, using his remaining strength, held his father's hand and looked into his eyes. He forgave him from the bottom of his heart. Theseus, the great Athenian hero, was no longer young. Although he still had physical sparkle, his gray hair signaled the onset of decline. And wishing to relive his youthful adventures, he set out with his friend Pirithus, the king of the Lapiths, in search of challenges. The tortuous paths led them to Sparta, where King Tyndareus reigned. In the Temple of Artemis, a festival was taking place where young girls danced gracefully. One stood out from the rest. Her name was Helen. People say that she was the queen's daughter with Zeus and that she was the world's most beautiful woman. Theseus was overcome with desire and kidnapped her with the help of his friend. Helen, despite her voluptuous beauty, was still noticeably young and naive. Theseus and Pirithus drew lots for who would get the young maiden, and fate decided favorably for Theseus. The old hero promised to help his friend find a woman who was as beautiful as his, and who was also Zeus's daughter. But before that, he left Helen under the care of Aethra, his mother. There was no woman whose beauty could even resemble Helen's, Pirithus realized that only the beauty of a goddess could match that of the Spartan princess. So he decided to keep a goddess for himself and chose Persephone. Like Helen, Persephone was also Zeus's daughter, but she was also the wife of Hades, the lord of the underworld. Even so, Theseus and Pirithus imprudently set out for Hades' realm in search of their prey. The heroes made their way through the underworld until they reached Hades' palace. However, their attempt to kidnap Persephone was unsuccessful, and because of a trick by Hades, Theseus and Pirithus were imprisoned. Both were chained for years in the underworld, 
They would have remained there forever if it were not for Hercules, who went to the underworld to fulfill his twelfth labor, capturing Cerberus. Hercules freed Theseus, but as he tried to free Pirithus, an earthquake proved that this was not the will of the gods. Theseus returned to the surface, while Pirithus did not. It is said that, as punishment, he remains in prison to this day. Others claim that the king of the Lapiths was devoured by Cerberus. During the time that Theseus was imprisoned in the underworld, Helen's brothers, Castor and Pollux, rescued the Spartan princess and returned her to her parents. After coming back to the world of the living, waning Theseus prepared for life's melancholy twilight. A long time passed before Hercules finally released the hero from his prison in the underworld. When the hero at last saw the light of day again, he was already old and his strength had been gobbled up by time. But he was unaware that the kingdom in Attica had undergone great changes due to his long absence. The Spartans, Castor and Pollux, together with their men, had defeated Athens' popular government. After all, the Spartans wanted to rescue their sister Helen, who had been kidnapped by Theseus. Taking advantage of the ensuing chaos, the Athenian nobility took the power back for themselves. The monarch of Athens was Menestheus, a descendant of the family that had ruled the city even before Theseus's father Aegeus rose to power. Theseus was only a shadow of his former self, and knew that he did not have the strength to fight for Athens he decided to secretly remove his sons from the city and send them to Crete, where their grandfather would take them in. Due to bad weather, Theseus stopped at King Lycomedes Island, where he had a large estate. King Lycomedes received the old hero cordially and presented him with his lands. But Theseus didn't know that Lycomedes was a close friend of Menestheus, the reigning king of Attica, and that he also wished to annex Theseus's lands in his kingdom. The king led the old Theseus along a road at the edge of a cliff, and, taking advantage of Theseus's carelessness, Lycomedes pushed him off the cliff. Theseus, the hero whose adventures had been sung about throughout Greece, died. His reckless adventures in his old age tarnished the hero's reputation for centuries. But, according to legend, when King Darius of Persia decided to invade Athens, the spirit of Theseus resurfaced, filling the hearts of the Athenian warriors with courage. This led to their victory over the Persians in the famous Battle of Marathon. In honor of Theseus, the Athenians made an expedition to rescue the hero's remains. The hero's bones were buried in Athens with great honors. After all, he was the greatest of all the Athenian heroes. <laughs>